In this video I'm just going to go over the initial startup from when you first open the program and make a startup calibration or use one of the startup calibrations to get your car up and running. Uh, so first we'll start um, to open the calibration you go to file open so we'll open TCD and then we'll go to startup calibration uh, I'm just going to use the SR20DE as an example and as you can see here uh, there's a bunch of calibrations in here that you can use uh, these calibrations are in the download section of the Nismotronic uh, website. So if you go to the download section where uh, you download initially download the demo version of Nismotronic, there is a, an updated startup calibrations there folder there that you can download and then unzip that folder and then put it into your your actual Nismotronic folder. Um, but say we'll just open up you know the basic SR20VE. Uh, 330cc injectors, 333, um, and uh, a B13 uh, DE mask. So we'll just open that up. And I have a NEMU plugged in. So what it did, it just uh, basically compared what's on the NEMU to the calibration that I just opened. Um, and on your initial startup, you're just going to want to hit upload TCD to NEMU. And you hit that, and it will upload. And uh, that, that's pretty much uploading the tune file to your uh, ECU. Now, say you want to use this uh, for a different MAF. Say we didn't have the other startup calibrations for like the N60 or N62. Um, there's a couple things, the basics that we want to go over here. Um, if you go to setup, this is where all of your sensors and um, any of that type of stuff is located, so including your MAF. So if you want to change the MAF, all you do is go to setup, MAF load, DQ table, and you can see right here there's a drop down where you can select a different math. So right now it's B13. Uh, we can go down and select you know, we N60 or E60, N62. Uh, we'll just do the N62. Um, and it gives you a math load factor rescale. Um, that because the N62 is obviously a bigger math, um, it already pre-fills in the old and new math for you. So simply all you have to do is hit apply and that's going to rescale the math load factor. So hit apply and we'll go in here and the math load factor uh, it was 1050 I believe uh, and you can see it, it basically doubled it which uh, that's what it should have done. But this is the other most important thing whenever you're changing math is the math load factor and what this is going to do is basically it's like the old K value um, it's, it's basically going to scale um, scale your load. So if we go back into the fuel table here, um, you can see the math load only goes to 110. With a DE math or B13 math, that's going to be just fine. Uh, even on an all motor, uh, you know, VE with an N62 math, that might be okay. But since we scaled the math load factor up um, by 2, we're, we're going to actually have to increase uh, your load scale because what's going to happen is it's almost going to go off the table or if it does go off the table you have to make sure your log TP value or your, or your mo log math load value um, is less than your maximum table math value on this column so say we log 130 um, for the math load value um, and you can see it here so say math load right now we have 31 Say this value goes up, um, goes up to 130, and you're all the way off the table. Um, you can rescale this by simply clicking on uh, the values and rescaling. And when you rescale this, you have to make sure you rescale the whole thing, uh, or it's gonna, you know, you don't want big gaps in between uh, the columns. So it, say it's going to 130, we'll give it a little overhead, and we'll make that last column, you know, 140 or 150. So all you do is click on it enter what you would like and then hit enter. So to rescale this pretty much we would just go right back through here and rescale the whole thing. Um, you don't absolutely have to change the table values at this point um, but we can do it simply like this. And that will be enough that you, you're, you're going to rescale it. It's going to be enough that um, you, know, you, you don't have to continue down any further. You can if you would like to. Um, but at, at that point, that would be an okay, um, you know, load scale. Now, 
Yeah, if you see that we just did that for the fuel table, if you go over to the ignition table, you'll see that the the math load scale is still the same as it was. It's not changed. And instead of going through there and changing all the values, um, you know, we have a uh, an import function. So if you right click, uh, hit copy load scales from your set one primary fuel load, uh, just click that, and you'll see that it instantly imports those load scales from your primary fuel table right into your right into your map uh, for your ignition table. That way you don't have to rescale the whole thing. Um, so that would be the setup for, for a different math. Now, to set up for additional, like a different set of injectors, you would go to fuel trims, fuel adjust, and then injectors. Um, and you can see here the current's 333. Uh, say we want to put in a set of, you know, SCI 525s or um, we can just type in 525 in the current. Um, and the other thing you have to make sure of, uh, we change the injector battery offset to more of a standardized um, uh, way of doing it. It's a table instead of the offset and the voltage scaler that, it, that the factory Nissan uses. So you can actually um, take a look and research your injectors and actually input the uh, the correct millisecond per voltage uh, that that your injectors need, and that would be the second thing. So first thing would be to change your current injector size. Second thing is change the battery offset if you have it available. Um, and in this case, I, I know it's a little different, but I don't remember offhand. But say if you have um, if you have a, a tune file already for a different set of injectors, you can also import to this. So what I'm going to do is right click and hit import. And you'll see that there's already one for uh, 550s. This one is actually for uh, the SCI 525s, I believe, anyway. Um, you can basically click that and import, and you see that it actually imports, uh, imported in fr from that file. And you, you can tell it did that by, if we click here, 0.65, and then go to import. it changes to 0.7. So that just gives you an idea of how, how that works. Um, the other thing to help you know, get the car started, um, you have the cranking uh, injector pulse width, which you can go in and edit right here. This is the cranking fuel that's given during, you know, when the engine is trying to start. Now, some of the, the load limiting and um, basically rev limiting issues that people run into um, are located here. You go to setup, uh, parameters and then Excel max math load. This is almost always either a turbo car or a bigger math car is going to run into this issue. Uh, we, we actually have a limit on uh, the Excel max math load, which is exactly what it sounds like. So if you have the lower limit here of 180 and say your table goes to 255, you actually your actual fuel table goes to 255 out here. Um, even though your calculated uh, math load could be like 240, it will cap it at 180. And obviously, if you get to that point, the car will just continually run lean in a spot, and you won't you won't notice um, what it's doing, or it, it will run lean. And that's because it's being capped here. If you want to completely get rid of it, literally just set all of these to 255, and that will get rid of your your max math load cap, and you'll never have to look back at that point. This is useful, um, you know, on some NA cars for real initial throttle tipping, uh, where it changes load. You know, uh, it would it would calculate a real high load. But for the most part, I would almost always set this to 255 and just forget about it. The next thing is overboost, and it's you know it's listed as a boost cut, but it's actually again it's a math overboost table. So. Depending on a, if you're using a B13 math or an N62, these values can all be incredibly different. If you're all motor, just go right in and set these to 255. So just go right in and 255. And that will completely dis disable your math overboost limit because obviously you're not going to have that with an, an all motor car. Now for a boosted car, what you're going to want to do is check, um, you know, I, I would set it somewhat low to begin with, say uh, say 220 across the board, so we'll do 200 across the board, sorry, highlight that, we'll just do 200, 
Okay. And then what you can do is at what? At full boost, uh, say you're going to run like 15 pounds. Uh, note what your math load is. So when, when you're going through the log, check your math load and make sure that it's lower than 200 or uh, just take note of where it is. So if you're going to run 14 pounds, 15 pounds, and your math load is 190, and you have your overboost table at 200, that's kind of close. So if, you know, if, if change in weather, uh, you know, anything like that, you can, you could actually spike up over and it could, it could cause a, an overboost limit. So we want to do is set this about 20 higher than what your max math load that you see during a wide open throttle pool um, at full boost or whatever you're going to run it at. And uh, I mean, that's how you set this table up. But if you're, if you're just using the, the base B13 uh, table and then try to, try to use that on a boosted car, you'll hit that overboost limit every time. Um, and that's something that gets people pretty quickly.